Topic 16, Higher Level Kinetics, Volume 5, What is the Rate Expression? We look at how to write a rate expression, the units of the rate constant K. We need to have an understanding of some graphical representations of the different reactions, and we also need to look at deriving a rate expression. From standard level, you should remember that the rate is defined as the changing concentration over the change in time. The units are usually mole per decimeter cubed per second, and the rate always has to have a positive value. So for a reaction to occur, we need reactants to collide, and higher concentrations generally lead to a increased chance of reactants colliding. So it's reasonable to assume that the rate depends on concentration. So the reaction between two reactants A and B can be followed experimentally and the proportion of the reactor rate will be proportional to the concentration of A raised to some power and the concentration of B raised to some power. So we get this rate expression. Rate equals K square brackets A to the power of X square brackets b to the power of y. k is known as the constant of proportionality, or the rate constant, and it's different for each reaction and is temperature dependent, so it changes as temperature changes. x is known as the order of the reaction, and y the order of the reaction for the other reactant. The overall order would be x plus y. The rate constant can be determined by rearranging the rate, the rate equation. The units of the rate constant depend upon the overall order of the reaction. Remember, A to some power and B to some power. So if we have a zero order reaction, which means rate equals K, then the K, the rate constant, will just be the same as the units for the rate. So that would be mole per decimeter cubed Per second. If we have a first order reaction, rate equals K times the concentration of A, then the K, the units for K would be rate over concentration. So rate is mole per decimeter cubed per second, and concentration is just mole per decimeter cubed. So what we would do here is cancel the mole per decimeter cubed out, and we're just left with the units for k as seconds to the minus 1 per second. We can do the same thing for a second order rate equation, which is where we would have a and b, or maybe a squared. But again, the rate is mole per decimeter cubed per second, and then we're dividing that by, in this case, concentration squared. So that's mole per decimeter cubed per second, uh, mole per decimeter cubed squared. So we would cancel out one of the mole per decimeter squareds down the bottom, which would give us s to the minus one over mole per decimeter cubed, which then when we bring it to the top means we've got mole to the minus one decimeters cubed seconds to the minus one. If we have a third order rate equation, it gets a little bit more complicated but essentially we have a squared and then multiplied by another concentration. So we have our rate mole per decimeter cubed s to the minus one over concentration cubed, essentially. So mole per decimeter cubed squared and then times another concentration. It's getting a little bit hard to read here, sorry about that. But we could cancel out one of the concentrations with the part at the top giving us s to the minus one over mole per decimeter cubed squared down the bottom. And then that would simplify to mole to the minus two, using our index laws, decimeters to the six, because when we bring it to the top, it becomes positive, s to the minus one. So that's the units. Now let's have a look at the graphs. We can determine the order of a reaction by observing either the concentration time graph or the rate time graph. If we have a zero order reaction, the rate is equal to the rate constant. So that means that the concentration is changing at the same rate every second. So it's like a straight line linear graph where the concentration remains constant. 
the gradient of this curve does not change. So, if we have a rate versus concentration graph, because the rate remains steady, that is just a flat line. The rate of this reaction isn't changing with respect to any of the reactants. A first order reaction has a concentration that changes all the time. It starts off very quick, and then as the concentration gets less, the rate starts to decrease. If we draw a few tangents onto the graph, we can see that at the start of the reaction, it's a very, very fast rate. And as we progress on, the reaction starts to decrease. That's typical of a first order reaction. So what does the rate versus concentration graph look like? Well, that would be a linear line showing that at lower concentrations, there's a lower rate and at higher concentrations, there's a much higher rate, rate versus concentration. For a second order rate equation, it's going to look a lot like a first order rate equation. However, it just starts off a lot steeper. So initially, the curve will be a lot steeper and the concentration will decrease much more quickly than a first order reaction. So it's an even greater change in concentration per second. The types of rate equations with this would be rate equals Ka squared or rate equals Ka times B. The rate concentration curve will now be an exponential. And then as the concentration increases, it's increasing faster and faster. A common question is to use data to determine the rate law and the order of the reaction. So here we have a reaction between fluorine and ClO2, and what we want to look at is the data, and how does doubling a concentration change the rate? But we only want to make sure that one thing is doubled. So to work out the order of F2, what we're going to do is look at where they've changed just the concentration of F2. So if we grab the rate of three and then divide it by the rate of one, because that's where the concentration has been doubled, we can work out what impact that's had on the, con the, the total rate of this reaction. So we have 2.4 times 10 to the minus three over 1.2 times 10 to the minus three, which gives us a factor of two. So doubling the concentration of F2 has doubled the rate. Doubling the concentration, double the rate, that's a first order relationship. Doubling the concentration, doubling the rate is first order. So that means that the rate equation for this, would it be rate equals K F2 to the power of one. Its order is one. I know I've written two there, but it should say one. Then what we've got to do is work out the order of ClO2, and we apply the same rule. We want to look at where they've changed only the concentration of ClO2 and what impact that's had on the rate. So in this case, we look at rate 2 over rate 1 because that's where the ClO2 has been changed. So we have 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3 over 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3, which gives us 4. But what they've done here is they've quadrupled the concentration of ClO2. So four times the concentration, four times the rate. That's a one-to-one -one kind of relationship. So it has an order of one as well. So the rate expression would be K bracket F2 to the power of one bracket ClO2 to the power of one. The overall order of this reaction is 2 because the orders of F2 is 1 and ClO2 is 1 as well. For the second example, we apply the same kind of rule. We want to work with just where they change the concentration of one of the reactants and work out its order. So we start off with the rate expression, rate equals K bracket NO to the X and then H2 to the Y. Remember, it's not the stoichiometric coefficients. We need to use the data. 
So the rate will equal k bracket no to some power multiplied by h2 to some power. And what we're going to do now is work with no first, determine its order, and then work with h2 to determine its order. So the order of NO, where can we see that they've changed the concentration of NO but haven't touched H2? Well, that's between experiment 2 and experiment 1. So the rate of experiment 2 was 5.0 times 10 to the minus 5. And the rate of experiment 1 was 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5. So this is how we can work out that factor. Putting that into the calculator, we get 3.8, which is approximately 4. So what does that mean? Okay, well, we've doubled the concentration of NO, and the rate has quadrupled. So it's kind of like a double-double. So that means it's an order of 2. That reactant has an order of 2. So it would be NO squared. Then we need to work out the order of H2. We do the same thing. Where have they changed just the concentration of H2? Well, that's between reactions 2 and 3. So we work out the rate of 3 over the rate of 2, and we can see that that would equal 2. So they've doubled the concentration of H2, and that's doubled the rate. So that is a first order relationship. So our overall rate expression would be rate equals K, square brackets, NO squared, because it's second order, H2 to the power of 1. The overall order of that reaction would be 3, 2 plus 1. Now the units for the rate constant, okay. Well, if we were asked to work out the units, then we would have rate, K equals rate of NO squared, over H2, and we did one of these ones before where we need to cross out the units to work out the units for the rate constant K. Now if you remember, you'll have this mole per decimeter cubed squared and then multiplied by the mole per decimeter cubed. We'll be able to cancel some things out and then we've got to use our index laws to simplify that expression. So we would end up with mole to the negative 2, dm to the power of 6, s to the minus 1. That's the units for our k value for this reaction. Okay, for this example, we need to calculate the rate constant as well. But before we can do that, we need to determine the order, and then we want to work out the value of the rate constant. So the rate equation would be k, square brackets, S208, the thiosulfate ion, square brackets, iodide ion, raised to x, raised to y. We need to work out the orders first. I'm going to reduce some of my working out for this one. So the order of S208 will equal rate 3 over rate 2. So doing that fraction, we would get an order of 2. So what that means is that if we double the concentration, we double the rate. So S208 has an order of 1. The order of I minus, okay, so we'll look at rate 1 over rate 2. And we can see that we have an, a, a 2. So that's an order of 1. Doubling the concentration, we double the rate. So our order is K equals S208 square brackets, square brackets, I minus, they're both an order of one. Okay, how do we work out the rate constant? So to work out the rate constant, the first thing we want to do is to work out the units. So here we are working out the units. We've got our rate, which is mole per decimeter cubed per second, over two concentrations. What we want to do now is to sub in some values. So I've picked experiment one. And I'm going to sub in the values of experiment 1 into that expression to determine the rate constant, the value of the rate constant. I could have used any of the other experiments and I'll get the same result. But you sub in the values from one of the experiments to determine your rate constant, which in this case is 0 0.081. And the units will be mole to the minus 1, decimeters cubed, s to the minus 1. 
Sub in the values to determine the rate constant. Another example is where we might need to calculate the concentration of a reactant when we're given the rate constant K. And this is in fact an old exam question. So we're given the rate expression, we're given the K value, and then we're given some information about the number of moles and the volume, and also the rate of reaction. So we use the rate equation, K, square brackets, in this case of hydrogen peroxide, square brackets, I minus, and we've been given all of this information. So we rearrange the equation to determine the concentration of H2O2, which would be rate over the rate constant times the concentration of iodide. Well, we need to work out the concentration of iodide. They gave us the number of moles and they gave us the volume. So the concentration is mole over volume, which would give us 0.5 or half molar. So we've got our rate, which was given in the question, 2.34 times 10 to the minus two, minus four, sorry, over the rate constant, K, and then we multiply that by our concentration of I minus. Summing all those things in will give us the concentration of the peroxide at that particular experiment. So topic six, kinetics, volume five, know the orders and the graphs. It's really important you know the graphs and remember the effect. You know, if it double the concentration, 